Hi everyone, today I'm with Amy from Project Shine and I met Amy during <laughs> doing teen mentoring at the Inner West. So for teenage girls who may need a bit of extra direction, support and guidance. Today I'm excited to speak with you Amy because you've presented a few workshops which have been really great about women's uh, self-image and confidence. Can you tell me a bit about what you've done there? Yeah, sure. So um I actually started Project Shine it's probably about seven years ago in the UK um, before we moved over to Australia and, and the workshops started around my skill set which was to increase young young women's um, self-perception, um, increase their self-belief and focused on the skills that I, I could offer initially so that would that was things like skin, how to look after their skin, you know, how to style their hair, how to do makeup if they needed to. Um, and as time went on, it evolved naturally, and um, I then increased the kind of uh, things that I offer. Um, and the main thing that I focus on is body image and how, in particular, the media affects our perception of self. Um, and I know that that obviously that kind of thing spans not just to young girls but to women as well. We're all affected by it. So yeah, that's really kind of the story of Project Shine. And, and since then, I've also got other trainers that come in and they also train on their skills. So that could be anything from yoga to cooking, anything that offers young people the chance to grow as a person really that's what project shine is all about fantastic and i'm aware that you uh come from a media background so presenting and editing so for you to come from that area what inspired this uh i guess it's a real change of direction really isn't it yeah absolutely um it's it's twofold <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of like chance that, ha that it happened um, and also a desire. So basically uh, when I met my husband in the UK, he, he worked with a lot of disadvantaged young people who um, had come from really bad backgrounds, um, crime, drugs, all kinds of things in London. And the home that he worked at was specifically set up to help almost rehabilitate them, to help them to see that they didn't have to follow the path of their parents. Um, and when we met, he asked me to go in and teach a session with them to help them see it a different way and help them feel good about themselves because they don't have any role models in life to teach them just personal hygiene. So it kind of started there, um, um, but I realized that actually it's also part of my purpose in life. You know, I suffered an eating disorder when I was younger uh, for about nine years. And so I obviously then obviously going into the media, I realized how much we're affected by everything that's around us all the time. And I realized that for young people, as adults, we can often distinguish in our minds, oh, I know that's photoshopped. I, I understand that that's photoshopped, I know the process. Young people's minds aren't developed that way at the moment unless we give them the education to give them the knowledge that that is what they do. Otherwise, they're aspiring mm. towards things that aren't real. And Absolutely. so I realized how much it affected me. And so I then was like, right, this is part of my purpose in life. I, this, this is my message to people. I have the experience of working in the media, but I've also had the experience of how the media affects me. Um, so that, that's really what, what my drive is. Wow, um, yeah, I'm very um, honoured that you were able to share that. And I guess my question would be, what do you think uh, was the main thing that helped you get to the other side of the eating disorder for any teenage girls or women who, who are listening? Yeah, completely. I think um, self-education, the right support for sure. Um, you know, I'm really, I'm really lucky. I've, I've got a very supporting family, you know, that have always been encouraged me and they're very positive so that was great although the downside is um my experience of accessing help was a really negative process um and not helpful whatsoever so that actually backtracked me for quite a few years and then i stopped seeking help so i know that there's still work to be done in terms of what we can offer young people and, and what adults as well you know, to help them with with this kind of thing 
um, which is a, another inspiration for me to make sure that there's the right support and safe environment that people can access, you know? Yeah, yeah. So having the, yeah, the right family, yeah. for sure, was one of them. But um, I did lots of self-development things, um, you, you know, that, that helped me to see life in a different way, and that's definitely helped me. Fantastic. What do you think is the biggest misconception about the TV media industry? You probably touched on it already with the photoshopping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, even for men, right, there's a huge amount of men that as well that feel this kind of pressure. But, you know, there's um, it's not just our physical appearance that's portrayed in the media, but there's also the lifestyle that is portrayed that we are supposed to uh, achieve. So um, success is defined by what we own or um the the material things that we that we have or how many holidays you're going to have a year you know all that kind of stuff there's not enough uh, messaging around that supports why don't you just love yourself make a good family you know connect to people have good relationships there's not enough messages about that it's all about how you look or what kind of a life you're going to have and happiness doesn't lie there, you know? Most people out there probably try to search for it in that way. It doesn't lay there, it lays inside you and the relationships that you have with people. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, unfortunately it's a money-making business and you don't make much money in TV if it's around, you know, self-help. But you look at someone like Oprah who was able to use TV to connect with people and I thought that was a you know, fantastic way to use it to your advantage. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, media in general and even like obviously social media right now, you know, it, it when used in the right way, it's an amazing tool. You can spread messages to people and reach out to people like you've never been able to do before. So it's a great thing. I'm certainly not, um, you know, dissing it or saying it, it's all bad. But I do think they, they there is a, a, an amount of responsibility that the media does have to take uh, on how it affects society. You know, um, and, mm. and that's reviewed enough for sure. Oh, absolutely. And uh, how do you define confident? Ah, oh, confidence. So um, I guess confidence, and you'll probably agree with this, comes from inside yourself. It's having that self awareness and knowing yourself, knowing what your boundaries are, knowing what you want to achieve for you and for nobody else, that really gives you confidence. Um, you know, everyone always says, you know, you've got to be confident in your own skin and on your own body as well and all that kind of stuff. But that's that's hard to do. That's hard to do. We all have that self-doubt in our minds. But mm. I still believe that we have to have a strong inner voice. It's the inner voice that, that creates the confidence. Yeah, I love that you touch on boundary as well because then you get that sense of who you are and it's okay to be different and, you know, because I think especially women get that messaging of be nice and, you know, like kind of keep the peace. Absolutely. And I think the more that we teach boundaries from a young age and it's okay to say no, it's actually healthy to say no to things that don't feel right for you. Yeah. The more they'll have a sense of who they are and that's okay. Yeah, completely. And that takes me on to the next question. The biggest challenge that you face when working with confidence around teenage girls um, and boys, but yeah. more so girls. Um, the biggest challenge will probably be um, that I, I can only have so much impact. And actually, as, as we know, the biggest role models in life are the parents. So that's my biggest challenge because I'm... I might be doing some great work. Yeah. They might they might feel great in the sessions, but then they go home to a different family set up with different beliefs. And so I know that there's work to be done in the home with the parents too around and this kind of stuff. Um, and also their peers. You know, like again, it's it's um, you're, you're faced with trying to make a, a big impression on them and help to shift them to change their perspective to change their perspective in such a sh short amount of time yeah. and then they go back to the classroom and they've got their friends around them and doing their thing and you know so I think there's a, there's a lot that needs to change and 
you can only do, do so much. So that's a challenge for sure. Yeah, definitely. And especially with parents like living a certain way for so long, it's harder to change when you're you're an adult unless you're really interested in, in seeing the impact that that can have. It, it could be really hard to get them on board. Yeah, exactly. And um, what would be the most important message you want to tell teenage girls and women? Or you want them to absorb from you working with them? Do you know the them? biggest thing? Yeah, I think they are the biggest thing that I've learned in life. And, and lots of people say it, you know, but life is very, very, very sh short. And I think I feel like I've almost wasted so many years worrying about what other people think um, or how I should behave or how I should look that I've never it's only now that I'm I've like stepped into myself and I can own myself you know and I, that I can create the happiness that I want so what I would say is don't waste time don't wait until you're you know nearly 40 like me to do that do it when you're young you know they, they have the power to do it for themselves and I just want to help them mm. to realize that they can make those choices you know that makes me feel excited. I know that that is my purpose, you know, because when I talk about it, I feel it in here. And so I just want people to take that yeah. away. Oh, absolutely. And I can relate to that. I feel like I've only kind of started living in the last few years and I'm like, oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> and I still have my moments and I'm like, yeah. why do you care what people think? Yeah. Why do you care that you don't look like a magazine model? <laughs> exactly. And then I challenge you know? that. Yeah. 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 And the inner voice is becoming more of a friendly voice, whereas in the past it was whipping yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We've all got it. And, yeah, definitely. Um, but I do love that. That's such a great message about, yeah, like being short and, short and just going yeah. for it, you know. And um, what do you tell girls who negatively compare themselves to magazine image of beauty? Oh, I mean, that's definitely something that I teach a lot in my workshops, you know, because I've, you know, similar to yourself, having worked in it, you know, the whole process, right, right from, you know, so I show them lots of videos on how Photoshop is, is um, done, but also talk about how it's also done in TV and film and all that kind of stuff, you know, that actually the end result uh, that we see in magazines or in uh, on billboards or whatever is it might as well not be a real person a lot of it is so changed and altered from the original person that it's it's almost like a computer generated image it's not a real person so how can we aspire to be something that's not real you know um so i i, I talk through that all of that and, and some some of the girls know but they don't, girls know but they don't realize to what extent um but often they don't even realize they just look at these people and think that that's what they're supposed to be. You know, oh, look at her, she's beautiful. And so my message is always, it's not real. Don't compare yourself to something that isn't real and not achievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can, I, I remember seeing some of those and it's just shocking. You would not recognize them as the same person. You can go on YouTube and see the before and after. There's lots of uh, yes. videos around that for men and women. So what's uh, yeah. a quote or mantra that inspires you? My quote that I use a lot, and I actually, you might see behind me, but um, I have, this is my little workspace where I have inspirational things around and my, you know, vision board nice. and all that kind of stuff. And the the quote that um, I use a lot to myself is, I am, it's, it's by Joan of Arc, I am not afraid, I was born to do this. And I just love it, because, not only because she's a woman, right? And so that gives me that strength of, yeah, I'm, you know, but also because it reminds me constantly of what my purpose is. And, and so why should I be afraid? I've got nothing to be afraid of because I was born to do this, you know? So that's what I use. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. That's very exciting. Your favorite go-to confidence booster? Um, uh, I, I would say um, the thing that makes me feel most confident and this might be a strange thing, I don't know, but um, is meditation. Because when I meditate, I'm more connected to who I am as a real person. And it helps me to forget about the, ex the external world. You know, it's, it's about who I am and I know that I'm a good person. And so through that, I gain confidence. So I would probably, yeah, if I'm not feeling too great, I just need to reconnect with myself. 
Oh, I love that. And yeah, I think some people don't realize that that's actually such a good part of meditation. It's connecting with your inner world. It's not about, you know, yeah. being a Buddha, you know, Buddhist or Zen or, or whatever. It's actually finding that real connection to your core and, and what's yeah. important to you. Mm, very cool. Uh, your top three tips. What would be your top three tips for more confidence and self-acceptance so, for women? Yeah, and I reckon obviously girls. Um, the first one is don't compare yourself to anyone. Like this is this is something that we all do. It's kind of like a natural thing that comes to us. But by but by comparing yourself to someone else, it's like comparing a tree to a car. They're two completely different things. You know, <laughs> a tree can't be a car, and a car can't be a tree. You know, so so. Um, I think, yeah, not comparing yourself and, and then and then the second one is obviously then it comes to self-acceptance. Like, you need to accept yourself and develop that self-love for who you are, everything that you are. Because you, there's only you in the world. So how can you compare to something else? Because you can't. So don't compare, accept yourself um, and educate yourself, you know, self-development and education around, you know, things that are affecting you and why you feel the way you 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 are you know that really helps you in in, in your whole life to move forward um so yeah i'd say those are my three things <laughs> fantastic so don't compare accept yourself and educate love it <laughs> i think that's it that wraps this up so thank you so much for your time amy and i'll post your website details below because i know there's quite a few projects that you get involved in with your company yeah and in the inner west of sydney so yeah i'll, I'll definitely put yeah. that out there for people thank you so much it was lovely take care